Now, before we begin today's session, I just want to get two things out of the way. First one is like I uh, I have a small request like watch this video till the end because I have some really deep insights here for this topic. So I'd like to watch uh, uh, this video. I'd like you to watch this video till the end so you can like completely understand what I'm trying to say here uh, because uh, it's like it's one thing to like speak on a topic for like make a five minute video, you know, to really uh, uh, hit a really shallow point of a particular video. And there's another thing to really go deep into that issue. Uh, and like, it's like, there are many ways to diagnose a particular situation. So you can go with uh, our modern medicine system where, uh, where you have some issue with you. Like what I mean is like a physical condition and you go to the doctors and they prescribe you a certain medication which works on the short term like a painkiller uh, or you can go to some healer or whatever like some um, ancient uh, medication or systems of diagnosis and healing where they will go you know really deep into a particular problem and actually try to find out like what is uh, the root cause or the source of that particular problem you know what i mean and try to heal that source rather than you know to use that painkiller band-aid method to just hide the wound or you know sweep your uh the dirt under the carpet method so i'm just going with the finding that source of the problem and uh, try to um like you know uproot the problem from the very source so that there's a permanent solution. So permanent solution, what, what do you need for permanent solution? You need patience. You need to have incredible um, capacity of patience. You need to show incredible capacity to, pay, uh, to have and uh, exhibit patience. And you need to uh, be patient, be perseverant, and you need to, to realize that this is what we are talking about is a really uh, deep issue and this is a very um, like this is a primary and a very core issue of your life if you're able to fix this this issue in your life you can only imagine how it, it's basically on a foundational level your life is going to change if you fix this issue so because of that reason I'm gonna but I, it's not even possible for me to you know, touch this topic on a shallow level, and uh, I have to go really deep. So I'm not really sure, uh, like, how long this video is going to be. So I cannot promise a, sh uh, a short session, you know, where I give you, like, five minutes because this is really a big problem. So big problems require big solutions. Do you ever wonder why, like, uh, there are, like, on any given topic, basically, when it comes to developing your personality or developing yourself as a person, as an individual, you realize that there are YouTube videos on any given uh, self-development, personal development uh, uh, topic. The, for example, this one, which we are talking about as relationships, right? So you can find YouTube videos on it. You can find articles on it on the internet. You can find articles on the same topic written by different people, right? Maybe the same YouTuber who posted a, a, a video on a particular topic, that same person also uh, posts an article on his blog, uh, sorry, on his blog on that particular topic. So you can also find books written on a particular topic. And in that same, on that same topic, you'll find a five minute video, a 50 minute video. You'll fi find an article that you can finish in about about say 15 minutes if you read that article for 15 minutes it's done you will also find books on that article one book you can find which is like a hundred page long you can find another book which is 500 pages long but most of us what in this fast-paced world what we do is or rather what we expect is like we expect that we're gonna watch that five minute video and it's gonna uh, solve uh that problem like for example in this case uh, we, we're going to be uh, touching on uh, this subject of relationships 
and we think that we're going to watch a five minute uh, or a 10 minute video or even a 20 minute video, let's say, uh, 20, 30 minutes video, that's going to solve that problem. Uh, but there, but then you have to think like, why is why are there uh, books in the market which ha which is 500 pages long on that same particular topic? So is uh, is the writer who has taken probably God knows like how many hours of work to write, edit like edit several times the draft like the first draft, second draft, third draft, God knows how many draft, and then finally it got into editing. And then it got uh, like the editors uh, 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 did so many scanning, so many editing. Then it leads to that final book, which you buy on Amazon or wherever. Uh, so that book, you can just imagine like how much work went to, into that book. So like uh, because we are impatient or rather I would say like because our society right now is so fast paced, it doesn't even give us a time to read a 500 pages book like that seems like a time from the past uh but you can only imagine the difference between that huge five five or whatever 30 minutes youtube video and that 500 pages book right so obviously if you uh if you read that 500 pages book with all the patience and you don't rush it and you give the time for that in uh, for that knowledge that is uh, that is imprinted in that book you give yourself, your intelligence, the time to absorb the knowledge and the content from that book. Now you can only imagine how transformational it is going to be. I'm pretty sure that most of us these days don't even read books. Like, I think that's kind of a thing of the past, right? Reading books. But what I'm trying to say here, I'll be, I, I hope you 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 get it. Like. What I'm trying to say is that there's a lot of difference between a five-minute YouTube video and there's a, a diff lot of difference between a five-minute YouTube video and a 30-minute YouTube video. So that's my like number one request, like watch the whole video in order to get the understanding of like what I'm trying to communicate because this is, this is what is this? This is my me communicating whatever is in here, whatever is in, in, in here and whatever it's, whatever experiences I had in my life whatever knowledge I gained, whatever I understood from this 27 years, I've been here on this planet as a human being for 27 years. And uh, I have, uh, uh, I can say today that I feel confident to speak on this topic because I have some substantial in uh, knowledge to impart here. So because of that reason, like I, I request your patience and your valuable time so that you can get the full communication. Because if you click the video, watch for one minute, two minute, and then you you will watch to some other cat video, then I'm afraid to say that the communication is incomplete. Uh, it's uh, then yeah, like even let's say this video is one hour long and you watched uh, even 30 minutes of it, frankly speaking. And you leave the rest half of the video. You don't watch it. What's going to happen is because I'm speaking this from my own experience. I've done this with other you know, like knowledge material, other podcasts, other long form videos, where we, especially on those videos which touch on important and foundational topics like this one. What happens is when we watch a like it's like a le a attending lecture of a professor and. Basically, walking, uh, you're bored of the lecture and you leave the class, but you miss half the lecture. So, you, see, you get what you came for, but it's it's not, you would think, like, you got 50% of the content, right? But it doesn't work that way. Well, the thing about communication is, sometimes what happens is, it's like a stream of communication. So, if you don't hear the entire whole thing, you're going to basically miss the uh, it's like what you gained is not 50 percent by listening to 50 percent what i of what i had to say you gained uh like zero percent because what happens is you didn't listen to the whole communication if you listen it's like half baking a cake yeah is there a thing like half baking no right you have to bake the cake full if, if the cake requires that you put it in the microwave and you need to microwave and uh, bake the cake, 
making time is uh, is of one hour, then you have to go through the entire one hour process. Otherwise, what you're gonna not what you're gonna get is not a half baked cake. What you're gonna get is basically something that you're gonna have to throw it in the dustbin because you cannot obviously consume a half baked cake. So it's like uh, sometimes what happens is you have to listen or listen to the full communication basically. Otherwise, uh, you're just gonna miss uh, the entire. Is you're just gonna get nothing. And what happens oftentimes is you will misunderstand uh, people uh, people's communication. Is because especially in this long form podcast style communication, what happens is um, people speak like it's a discussion like a deep they go deep they start shallow and they go deep into a particular topic and if you just listen to some bits of it maybe something you will hear that's gonna contradict your worldview uh something that you already know it's gonna contradict with that uh, with your current state of egoic mind and it's gonna just uh be complete misinformation you're gonna completely misunderstand uh the communicator and the communication itself. So it's just, uh, you're doing uh, rather like not watch, right? I guess. So anyways, um, that was my, like, uh, uh, that was my request. I think it's a prerequisite. Uh, so I just had, uh, I, I feel like it's important to share that. Second is a really small, like, just if you have, if your English is not very good, uh, like, uh, so you can use say uh, on YouTube, obviously you know that probably, like you can use a CC button. You can see if you're on a smartphone or any device, there are closed captions, which is uh, abbreviated as CC, which you can click on and YouTube's uh, uh, AI basically will uh, put uh, my speech into words. So you're going to uh, get the live subtitles of this entire video. So that helps, you know, because uh, sometimes you forget that English is one of the so many different languages out there. And just because your English might not be that that good like uh, uh so you it, it it really helps you know like when my english was not that good it really helped me to use subtitles when i used to watch movies uh so that really helps with the communication so that is something that i wanted to get out of the way now coming back to our topic that we have today so why do you think your relationships uh fail and they fail uh, so so what happened, maybe, uh, I don't know personally what your current state of relationship is. And so firstly, let's get this out of the way. But I, when I mean, rela- when I talk about relationship, relationships are different kind of relationships. Uh, you have a relationship with your mother, your father, your brother, your girlfriend, boyfriend, your husband, husband, wife, whatever, your teacher, your, uh, uh, your uh, boss, your employee, the different kinds of relationship. But in this video, we are going to talk about the most, um, uh, uh, I would say, like, uh, most complicated of them all, I guess. I mean, obviously, it's uh, different from different for different people. Maybe this one is not complicated for you, but I'm speaking of, obviously, uh, the romantic type of relationship uh, which you have with your partner. Um, so, uh, so you might be, uh, so obviously, if you're watching, if you click to watch this video, then it's a, Pretty fair to assume, I would say, that you are going through some rough times in your relationship. Maybe uh, you never even had a romantic relationship, or maybe uh, you just—it uh, it could be you never had a romantic relationship, or maybe you're you're just uh, you're lonely, going through life. You're fa- facing loneliness. Uh, you're uh, seeing all your friends and people in your circle. Maybe they have relationships and you feel jealous, lonely, uh, you feel isolated because of that reason. Uh, so I don't know your current situation, but it's fair to assume that, yeah, obviously you're going through some bad, rough times. So the topic, obviously, as you can see, is why your relationships uh, fail. So the reason is basically your you now this is something that you would be able to answer the best obviously you you no, really know why your relationships fail maybe you're not a, that attractive on a either on a physical level or like if you if you're a girl maybe maybe you're not as attractive on a physical level because that's most uh, that's what most guys uh, look out for and if you're a guy maybe you're 
not masculine enough, not charming enough, maybe not tall enough, uh, not uh, physically uh, equipped enough or whatever, maybe not intelligent enough. When it comes to guys, there are a lot of factors because women are very complex as creatures. They're very complex. Uh, guys are mostly simple, mostly like uh, they're uh, they're simple. Uh, they uh, go for physical beauty and attraction. Most guys, uh, whenever I'm going to generalize, obviously I'm going to generalize based on what most of that particular gender group is about. So obviously I cannot specifically go into every particular niche and every particular type of guy or gal because there are ultimately everyone, regardless of their gender, is a human being. So everyone is different personality-wise. On a personal level, everyone is different and everyone's preference is different based on their past uh, experiences, based on how they grew up, based on their childhood experiences, based on their unique psychology. Everyone's, uh, everyone's uh, preferences are obviously going to be different. So I, uh, I'm going to obviously have to generalize in order to uh, basically um, delve into the particular issue that we here have here in our hands today. So what mostly why your relationships fail is mostly because of incompatibility. The most important reason is incompatibility. Your relationships fail because you are trying to make it make it work with the wrong individual. So regardless of this, uh, with your uh, guy or if you're a guy or a girl or whatever, if what you ever your gender is, if you are not able to find that particular connect, connect the particular match, uh, it's not really gonna happen. But it's not even that simple. There are lots of societal problems which I believe, which is coming here at play. So first of all. In our current society, if we take the example which I brought in earlier about the whole uh, YouTube videos and the books, as a society, we have lost uh, this uh, the ability um, to show patience. Like we are impatient. We have become really impatient in a generation where we are uh, swiping Instagram reels. Uh, we are watching really short form of content, we have become really uh, impatient with everything. And because there are so many choices now, what happens is there's this uh, problem of choices. When you have too many choices, when you, when, you're, when you have Netflix, when you have Amazon Prime, and when you have hundreds of others, uh, other platforms where you can choose your next movie or you can choose your next TV show from, it, it often happens that we are really unable to decide what to watch. Whereas in the old days of cable, you ha really didn't have a choice. You had like probably like, uh, I mean, you have uh, a lot of television channels. But in the past, we used to have like our parents used to have like probably a max of 100 channels. And in, if they wanted to watch a movie, there, uh, there were probably like 10 channels that shows movies and you had to choose uh, from that 10 channels. So uh, in today's times, what has happened is we have so much of choice when we have to watch movies. And I'm just using movies as an example here to, to compare it with people really, because uh, in this generation for us, dating is like going on Tinder and Bumble and a hundred other uh, dating websites that you can just uh, like uh, find on the internet and going there and basically swiping through people like cards, like Instagram reels, basically. And yeah, there are, you have access to a wide range of people now. But the thing is, you have um, lost, uh, not lost, but it's like, it's more like you have, um, well, Providing the fact that basically there is a debt to every person. Swiping cards when you're into that culture, you're treating everyone uh, based on uh, their their just uh, an instant appearance of their physical look and uh, their short 50 character bio. And uh, which is like, uh, how different is that going to be for? 
every person. You know, every person has a unique uh, fingerprint. My fingerprint is not going to match with any other person on this planet. Anyone from the past, anyone of present. So you can imagine the design of the universe that everyone is an individual person and everyone is uh, very unique. It's just that you don't realize how unique you are because you uh, were unlucky enough to not have the time or have uh, that space to really explore yourself um, and to really look and be able to see your uniqueness. So what happened is that on this, uh, these dating websites, uh, you're swiping through people. You're not able to understand that every swipe that you make, that's a person. What that basically means is that that's an individual, a unique individual like whom there is really no one on the whole planet. And uh, yeah, so you, you, you're basically treating uh, it like a, it's like it just loses that depth thing. Now, it's really complicated. So I'm just really making my way through the to get into more depths here. So please allow me that time here. So what happens is, first of all, is this culture. Because in our parents' time, they had limited options. So they used to not have internet. They used to not have access to a lot of people. So frankly speaking, they had like a few choices, a handful of them. And they made their choice uh, based on that handful of options they have access to based on their geographical area. So that's one thing which is uh, prevent, uh, so in our parents' time that was different, which is uh, from the times we live in right now, which is the modern post-internet, post-social media uh, time period. So that's one thing. But it's also uh, like there are more challenges to it. Like you have to understand uh, like why relationships fail, and especially in those. So I'm, I'm from India. I'm uh, and I have a global understanding of various different cultures, um, Western cultures, uh, Middle East. Not so much Middle East, but India, because I grew up in India, I have some understanding. Uh, it sounds funny when I say some understanding, but hear me out. Like, yeah, I have more understanding of Western culture because I'm a Western culture junkie, to be honest. Like, I consume so I watch so much Hollywood. Like, I'm basically I I. Uh, at this point, I, I think it's pretty safe to say, like, I know more about Western culture than uh, than the culture of my home country. But yeah, I, I know I, I know the culture of my home country too, and I know cultures from different other Eastern countries, Japan, Korea, whatever, uh, and even Middle Eastern countries. But yeah, mostly I know about the culture of like in general, like Western culture. Um, but the the thing here is that mostly. Mostly what happens in relationships is that there is now, now, now obviously, uh, like if we talk about men and women, they, they function differently. And, you know, you have all obviously already seen those videos where as, as a guy, like why you have been able to, why, why uh, the girl that was with you, like she left you because she lost attraction for you and women lose attraction for men. Um, because of uh, female psychology. So you have obviously explored, uh, like I'm assuming you have explored all those videos where uh, the coach and the, yeah, the relationship coach tells you why uh, females lose attraction for men who are uh, not alpha enough or who are not, uh, you know, masculine enough, basically, who are not like these uh, attractive guys attractive in the sense that they are not able to like attract women because they were not uh you know lead they lack leadership qualities because they lack confidence you know all those things why where girls lose attraction for men because they lack self-esteem they lack uh, leadership qualities because they have no career because they have no money and because they have nothing going on in their life women are looking for a man 
uh, to uh, to uh, as the women when they are looking for men, like as in a long term partner, they're looking for someone for for a man who is um, stable. Like she wants to imbibe her a uh, feminine energy, which is very uh, which is very volatile, which is beautiful, but 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 volatile with this strong, uh, solid, concrete masculine energy. So that is how relationship mostly like the masculine feminine uh, uh, diaspora, like not diaspora, the masculine feminine, that polarity or that duality, that that is how it works in relationships, is a feminine person is looking for uh, a masculine person so that they can blend their energy and become like a, like a masculine feminine uh, dual like like how the electrons circulate uh, the the neutron of an atom basically or how the planets whatever like we can go like that's that's some deep level stuff like the, uh, but but we have to focus on uh, like the relationship topic here so that is one thing why like relationships fail because as a man you are not masculine enough but I want to really go and uh, like give you another perspective on the whole situation which i frankly uh, believe like these things are not being discussed enough on the internet so like regardless regardless of the whole uh, masculine and feminine and male female psychology regardless of psychology if we look above psychology if we try to approach beyond psychology and go beyond psychology here we have to understand that we human beings so right now western media believes that psychology or rather what i see on the internet today is people believing that when it comes to relationship uh, relationships and why they fail and how to make it work it's all about psychology so the uh so the coaches are teaching men uh how to master uh, their masculinity their male psychology and, and they're teaching um, men about female psychology so that they can understand female psychology and uh, accordingly change uh, their personality uh, uh, kind of like a salesman, kind of like, yeah, kind of like salesman. Uh, it's kind of like a sales training, like how you can um, understand the female psychology and how you can tap into that psychology so that you can like benefit from that whole situation. It's kind of like how uh, the teaching right now is on the internet, on YouTube, especially like why the, when the coaches teach men, um, which is all good, that's nice. Uh, because yeah, obviously if you, if you are a slob, then no woman will be attracted to you. You have to be, uh, you have to be a strong, uh, independent man uh, and, Frankly speaking, yeah, or, or women are attracted to strong, independent men. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't work. Yeah, that's true. But we have to really understand, like, as a society and as uh, people in general. So what I see, like, the discussions and the teachings are lacking mostly is that we are really, really unconsciously dividing our, uh, our consciousness into this... Uh, 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 we are dividing the human consciousness into this male and female polarity unconsciously because yeah we are yeah men are men and women are women i get that and yeah i, I like no re no disrespect to other genders because there are many other genders that people identify with but mostly like because of this video and in order to you know because it's already such a complicated topic so we have to really fix uh be uh while because of the sake of the discussion we have to take these uh, two genders into account, the male and the female. So, yeah, uh, when it comes to these teachings, like why men are failing to attract women, uh, mostly the issue that is going on is that we are unconsciously dividing the society into this men and female, female perspective, which is like, yeah, like I was saying, men are men and women are women. I get that. But it's like uh, we have to also realize that... Eh, if anything, like if there is any, uh, because there are different kinds of identity, gender identity, men, women, because of that psychology, which by the way, is all socially driven. Like there's nothing concrete about all those things, male, female, 
it's all social construct. It's all like socially dri driven um, gender identities. Uh, yeah, obviously, like, like I get it. Like men, as in physically, with the reproduct the reproductive system and all, and like, yeah, testosterone and all that. I get that. Yeah, it's like I'm not stupid enough to not see it. Yeah, obviously, men men uh, have a penis and women have vagina and boobs. <laughs> but the thing is, like, yeah, that's very rudimentary. I mean, if you're listening to me, I expect like that that kind of information is uh, something which a child can even tell, like a man. As a penis and a woman has a vagina. That's nothing. Uh, but the thing is, we are not. We are forgetting uh, some a higher level of identity that every one of us have, regardless of gender, which is uh, human. The human identity. What is above the gender identity? That is a human identity. Every single one of us, regardless of our nationality, regardless of our gender, uh, any gender that we identify as, we are. Above that layer of identity, there's another layer of identity, which is uh, our humanness, the human that we are. So why I'm bringing this and how I I believe that this is uh, where uh, the problem lies with this whole men are failing to attract women is because, especially what I'm seeing in the Western societies, women are not putting any effort when it's when it comes to this game of attraction which it is uh, this is all a game of attraction you fall in love but prior to that falling in love phase there is a phase of attraction which is a uh, sexual attraction basically which is uh, appears as this noble attraction it's all sex. Uh, it's all related to sex and sexual attraction, really. Uh, so what happens is, like in this prior phase, before the love phase, the falling in love phase, um, there's this attraction phase, and there's like I get that, like female, like in this game, women are supposed to like choose whichever. Uh, male force, masculine force is more attractive, which comes off as more attractive. And obviously, female are gonna, uh, women are gonna choose uh, from that hundreds of varieties of male attractions available in front of them. Women are just gonna choose one of them, uh, whichever is the most attractive to her. But what, as a society and as women and men and human beings, we are failing to see is that. Uh, like, so I'm going to communicate with women here. Like, I frankly speaking, like, this is more prevalent to Western societies. Like, I don't see th uh, this kind of thing, frankly speaking, doesn't have uh, happen that much in this problem of this men failing to attract women. This this problem, yes, it, it exists in my own country, which is India, but it's not how you think it is. Like, in Western countries, I see there's so much pressure on men to be attractive to women, to be masculine, this hyper-masculine person, uh, which is prevalent here as well, like hyper-masculine and alpha, quote-unquote alphas, they attract women here too, that's true, but um, it's like we have to understand, like especially I'm communicating to the women here, what you don't see the problem is, like when, when you are, when you're uh, just in this game, in this playing this role of a woman, and you're just choosing, like, okay, so I got approached by a hundred men, and obviously, like, uh, most of them are so beta, right? And, like, I got approached by this, this charming, dashing guy and this alpha guy, which I find really attractive, which makes my pussy really wet, and uh, and uh, I think this guy is the one. But especially these are the women in their twenties, and even like eighteen year olds, and yeah, in their teens and their twenties, you're not really seeing what what you're getting is yourself into here. What happens is that these men are not uh, long term partner eligible, frankly speaking, they, because eligible. Okay, sorry. Wrong way to communicate here. 
eligible or not eligible it's it's a, it's a subjective uh, thought process i think but i think that these uh, these kind of men are they're going to not satisfy you in the long run like if you marry them you're going to be sorry that you did frankly speaking because because what happens with these uh, with these alphas is right so like women listen to me alpha men have access to so many women that they're going to just forget about you that's the truth i mean if you're if, if you take like you're going to you're going to have this alpha guy and and he's going to be your prince charming for the rest of your life it, it just won't work because it's like these men men they have access to so many women and men are mostly like physical creatures so they going to just lo- lose attraction for you because they have so many alternatives that they just why the, why will they care about you why 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 will they like look at this from the alpha male the guy your prince charming look at look at it from that guy's perspective like he he's going to keep you and he's going to also keep uh some side women and he's going to like keep switching you know like our mr famous uh what is that guy who is uh, our famous masculine coach the most famous of them all uh, uh this is, i forgot the name of that guy oh, that guy mr mr andrew tate yeah like uh mr andrew tate now obviously he's he's a douchebag and i'm i know that most women are not attracted or high quality women are not attracted to uh some alpha like andrew tate you're going to obviously find some alpha who is also a, a good person i get that like uh, a tall handsome guy with good physique uh who is also a good person uh to be honest there are men you know, there are a lot of men out there who's like that. i i don't know if there maybe there are yeah there are a lot of them but yeah i mean it's it's all good yeah you you you're going to they're going to be able to satisfy you and yeah they are husband material boyfriend material i get that but see those uh, that perfect kind of man that you're looking for the tall handsome uh charming masculine like masculine enough physically strong enough tall enough and also like a good person in general i think that's ryan gosling and that that's ryan gosling and that's glen powell and that's brad pitt right that's shahrukh khan even though shahrukh khan is not tall enough but my point is that there are not a lot of men like that just because just just as there are not so many women there that's uh, like looks like uh, uh, priyanka chopra or looks like karina kapoor or looks like uh, alia bhatt like if somebody somebody has the personality and the physique and everything going on for them like uh, someone like a Brad Pitt kind of person or your uh, George Clooney or that manly man the men of men they will choose someone they will be looking for obviously they will choose a woman who who is physically really beautiful like you have to be really physically it that's just the just the, the fact like generally speaking these men are going to Uh, really go out for the physically most beautiful the nines and tens uh when it comes to women so they're going to go out for the scarlett johansons they're going to go out for the amy adams so yeah you know how it goes or the problem is that most women you are kind of overestimating yourself um i don't mean to sound harsh like i i i don't really care if i sound harsh my priority is to sound uh truth like i have to sound true i have to be and take my discussion to the closest possible truth that is possible for me with my current level of intelligence because uh, otherwise i'm doing a disservice to myself that is how uh, the way i uh, i look at things and i the way i look at the world so um when it comes to this topic uh too i have to just speak the truth no matter how harsh or good that sounds irrespective of how it sounds and uh, uh 
to you as a person, I have to just uh, go out and speak the truth. So what happens is um, 50%, like, on a, like, for, like as a rule of thumb, 50% of the world is men, 50% is women. As a rule of thumb, just for the sake of conversation, for the sake of this problem and uh, trying to understand and going to the solution of this problem, 50% are men, 50% are women. Now, in that 50% men and women categories, you have the alphas when it comes to men, and you have the alphas when it comes to women. The problem is that in the women category, most females think that they are alphas, whereas it's really, really simple. In the male category, there's really 10%, the top 10% alphas. Even though alpha is a spectrum, like when you you can get the most alpha of alphas out there, like your Elon Musk and your in your the billionaires, uh, the most uh, charming, the celebrities, the top A-listing celebrities, they're the top ten alphas, the the top top alphas, you know, and when it comes to the male category, similarly you have female female entrepreneurs, intelligent female women, uh, and you have successful female women. Charming female women, supermodels, really attractive women, physically more really attractive. And so in women, there's a mixed category, but mostly in men, there is uh, the top 10, like like I said, the alpha is a spectrum. So as you go down the barrel, it goes to from that alpha spectrum, decreases to that beta spectrum, and it happens to the female category as well. It's really a spectrum. And now, the problem is that most fem females they will go for like the top top half or no, not even half uh, like the top yeah mm, uh, like a top yeah top one third or top 25 percent of the they will target the top 25 percent to be honest they target the top 10 percent and then from that they keep coming down because they realize they start realizing that they, they are themselves not worth that top uh top 10 percent they're not worth uh, that that to that highest level of alpha male, like they're never going to be able to attract that top 10% level of alphas. So what happens is when you're in your 20s, which is the time you, you kind of, uh, as you go down your 20s, the closer you get to your 30s, you get serious about your life partner. And But what happens is women are so adamant they they really think even the shallow, low-quality women, sorry, no offense, but yeah, you are what you are. You know that. And deep down, you know that. Like how much of a quality you you present, uh, you, you really know that. So like you, you could be an alpha female or you could be a beta. Like it really depends. You have to be honest with yourself. Really understand on where you lie on the spectrum scale of alpha and beta. Um, so what happens is like the female are so adamant and they're so so unintelligent you know, that they, they just keep on wasting their valuable precious 20s and not really are able to understand the the that they are not the uh, like more obviously 90% are lower than the in a lower spectrum then the bottom 90% is at a lower spectrum than the top 10%. That's like a simple fact. So if you fall in the category of top uh, that bottom 90% and you're going out of your league and you're chasing men and you're trying waiting for men of that George Cooney and Brad Pitt type to come and attract you, you're just wasting your time. You're wasting your time. What happens is so many good men who are like, your average fives and sixes, they maybe maybe you are also a five or a six, and uh, and uh, on the male spectrum, five fives and six hit you on a daily basis. So many men approach you who are like average, that you just uh, they're just not able to. They are not masculine enough, not charming enough for you. So what happens is you're wasting these category of men. Who are average? Who are not George Clooney, but who are there? Yeah, they're something. I mean, they're not like these horrible people. Most uh, there are so many good men 
who get rejected. And once they get rejected, and let me tell you, if they have self-respect, they're just going to, they're not going to wait too long. They're going to leave because they have, like, they're going to lose interest in relationships in general. So what happens is, and that is what is exactly happening in the current Western society right now. So many men are losing interest in women, frankly speaking, because what they're seeing is because they thought that they're going to just find their feminine half, which is going to complete them because that is what men are looking for. Uh, generally speaking, men are looking for their feminine halves and women are looking for their masculine halves. But the problem is women, all women, regardless of where you are in the spectrum, you are looking for that highest top quality masculine half. But the problem is you're going to only be able to attract um, uh, on general, uh, general uh, like uh, level, like on a general scale of understanding, you're going you're gonna to just able to be able to attract someone off who is in your league. So if you're trying to go out or go for men waiting, if you're basically waiting for men who are out of your league, then you're just going to waste the men that is in your league. And now what has happened, because so many women did it for so long, um, so long, as in like they have been doing it for like, I think mostly just uh, 20 years. 20, 30 years. So in a broader scale of human evolution, if you talk about, it's not that long. I mean, things will change because one thing that's true that doesn't change is change. So this thing about life in general, like regardless of relationships, the wheel, there's a saying, right? The wheel always turns. So n n nothing is ever fixed. So right now, uh, on a global scale, politics-wise, uh, we have we are seeing more of conservatism on the rise, but when conservatism will become boring, really, there will be more liberalism on the rise. So this liberal conservative, every basically every duality and every polarity, there's a cycle. I mean, it just keeps rotating. So it's a wheel. It's basically the wheel of life. So now, uh, right now, on this relationship uh, duality and this real relationship aspect of uh, of life what we are seeing is that for the last 20 uh, 30 years i think especially uh talking about western um society right now um what we have been seeing is that women have been really been when women have been really fake flaky like they have been uh, flaking uh men who are average because they think like like why why should i like go uh like uh like settle 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 for this man because I can uh, attract better, right? I can wait and attract better. What you're doing is you're ruining, like, you're, you're, you're basically not seeing the value of those average men because you have, you think, you're in the illusion that you have access to so many men, mm. but you keep waiting. Nothing happens, basically. Like, you, your relationships are ruined, irrespective of men. So you, you, you waited. Men... Men are like holding those flowers, and but you're not interested. And what happened is, uh, the entire game is ruined because this is this is a, a game, and this is a, a a game where everyone is participating. All men and women are participating. Also on a on a collective, um, a holistic vi uh, vision. If you if you're able to see what happened is that uh, a lot of men actually lost faith in relationships. And uh, it's really sad um, uh, that it, it, it happened and they're uh, now focusing on their career. So all the average men and kind of average, like not the A, the Bs, like because all the women were going for the A listing list men, but all the B, C and all of the men below the A category, all of them lost interest in but uh, in women and in uh they starting hating women because they uh because uh hey that is what human consciousness does whenever human consciousness is unable to understand something they come up with conspiracy theories and ideologies so right now um in the social media and media in general 
uh, on the internet, you will find conspiracy theories and uh, ideologies like the black pill ideology, the red pill ideology. So, so many men got red pilled, black pilled, and they are now have gone make tau, like they have men going their own way. So they, they, they're now more focused on also like, and even like the YouTubers, they're promoting I mean, that is how what happens in society. Yeah. Mostly people are going to promote whatever is currently trending. So if MGTOW is trending, if Black Pill is trending, if the Red Pill is trending, uh, most people are going to just uh, perpetuate. And regardless of men and women, by the way, you will see uh, men and women, and even women on YouTube, they're going to, there are so many channels on YouTube. Who are, which are run by women, where they, they're constantly saying, like, women are so stupid, women have ruined relationships, because that's a trend that has become a trend. That is, a, the men are the young, immature, unintelligent, um, maybe, well, for a lack of better words, like, men who are uh, unconscious, men who don't know any better, they're listening to these ideologies perpetrated by and you know if a woman is saying it it must be true right because women are any woman basically on the internet is frankly speaking they're representing their gender as if that, that's the case uh anyways that's what the, it seems like you know, from the social from the social media perspective but these uh, immature men who don't know any better they're just listening to these uh, these people on the internet who are who are uh, like uh preaching these ideologies like, oh, you know, women are like that. Women are like, all women are basically whores and sluts. And they, they that's what they do. That's what they do. They cheat. Uh, and they're dehumanizing women, basically, uh, which which destroyed feminism. It affects fe feminine uh, confidence. It affects the confidence of women. It does so much damage to society because society is 50% women, 50% masculine, 50% feminine. So, irrespective of the gender, like you can be anyone, you can be a feminine man, a masculine woman, or anything like a yeah, any gender you identify with, basically. But what happens is because of these um, of these uh, ideologists, uh, uh, a narrative is being every time the thing, every cultural um, phenomenon is basically driven by narratives by influencers on the internet. So so what happens is uh, basically right now, um, yeah, like I said, like the, uh, the, fem the, the feminine, the women, they're losing all their confidence and they're, uh, they're failing, uh, like they're not failing, but what I'm trying to say here is like it is, it is affecting the feminine energy of the world. So like it is uh, because of, yeah, I mean, women, whatever like they they thought like they have access and they are now realizing the yeah that uh, a lot of uh, good men are out there um who are not the you know Brad Pitts and the and the Leonardo DiCaprio's of uh, uh that they they thought they could attract but they're you know this whole mindset like they could set settle for they're settling for the average men uh, but they actually uh could have gone for the top tier ones. So now there, there are other perspectives and other levels of depth to it, which I'm going to just connect and vibe into right now, but I'm just building. It's like, you know, any anything, any topic that you could think of in the universe, everything, it, literally everything in the universe is like an onion. There are layers. You peel one layer, there's another layer on uh, behind it. There's another layer. If you peel another layer, there's another. It's basically like an onion. Anything about your human life, any topic, any major topic that you can think of, is exactly like an onion. So you have to keep peeling and you have to be patient. Remember, patience is the key. You have to be patient to understand any any given uh, situation. If you, if you read that 500 pages book instead of that five minute YouTube video, you're going to know so much more about it that you're going to be like cured basically i mean that problem will cease to exist to be honest uh that that actually happened for me because i chose to go deep into so many topics that i uh, in a way i feel like really lucky there's been so many topics that i have found the permanent cure to because i just went deep 
that's it. I just, I just thought like, no, this is not like, this is, there's more to that iceberg, you know? You see the tip of the iceberg and you think that's it. But the iceberg is really deep. You got to go to that bottom tip of the iceberg. That's where that the good stuff lies. So anyways, uh, like I was saying, like uh, this male, female, the whole thing. So what happened is fine. Like women, they're, they're really innocent. Women are innocent creatures, honestly speaking, on a general scale. I think women are far more innocent than men, honestly speaking. Uh, like, yeah. But the thing is, like, so what happened is, like, men are losing confidence in women. And vice versa, versa all that there is so much gap between the two genders right now, which is, frankly speaking, like, I, I find this, I find it so stupid, really. Like, why should there be so much a gap between the genders? Like, why are women, women are so afraid of men, men are so afraid of women, like, not afraid, like, on a physical, that thing, like, of, like, the our old times, the violence and stuff. But, like, men, are, it's like we're living in, like, in a different world now, different world now. Like, women are not interested in men as well. Because they had be, because both sides have been hurt so badly, because uh, men and women are it's basically anyone who is masculine and anyone who is feminine, they're gonna find each other attractive. But because someone who is masculine, that person is so different from someone who is feminine, what happens is that uh, they fail to understand each other. So coming to the like. Going back to our core topic, to answer that question, again, I will try to hit, hit answer that question. It will be a short hit answer. So the question is, why do your relationships fail? Because you fail to understand your opposite polarity. You fail to understand, if you're a woman, you fail to understand what being masculine is about. You have zero knowledge of what masculinity is. And if you're a man, you have zero knowledge what femininity is about. So you have to know, you have to study the species, frankly speaking. It's kind of like you're attracting a different species. Like you, you heard that uh, book, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. I mean, it's basically, what is what does the title say? It says that men and women are so different as if we are living on different planets. It's like as if we are aliens to each other. And it, it makes sense, right? Men and women are so different on a fundamental level. And this this difference is, I frankly believe, it's because of evolution. Uh, looking back at our forefathers, what it used to be, like in the old times, in the Stone Age and the pre-Industrial Revolution, and not even, like, what am I even talking about, Industrial Revolution? Like in the historic times, in the barbaric period, you know, your Vikings and the Game of Thrones period. What ha used to happen was men, you know, it, it was a time of, it was the Dark Ages, right? It was so violent those times. And men used to be like, the, it, what, what used to happen was men, because of the brutal masculine energy, they used to dominate the world. And still they do. But, you know, kind of, compared to the barbaric old times, the, to the masculine dominance today is, compared to that is, it's uh, like very, very less. But yeah, in, even today, I, I will admit, yes, there's a overall masculine dominance. There is no equality, even today. The feminine and masculine are not equal. Like uh, we have to work towards that societal goal as a, as a species, to be honest. Uh, but when it comes to masculine and feminine as, an, as the, of the old times in the barbaric period, um, because uh, that was a very, a very rude time, a very mm, prehistoric and um, a very rudimentary time period uh, as far as our evolutionary psychology or developmental psychology is concerned. Um, we were really unevolved, so to speak. Like, yeah, physically we were evolved, but evolution is not just physical, it's psychological as well. So our psyche was really, really like in our baby in, in different stage, stages. And what happened was men uh, were uh, like ruling the world because of their powerful masculine energy. Uh, but feminine, feminine energy is like, uh, so I, I like to uh, like objectify masculine and feminine energies. Masculine energy is like this uh, rock, this stone, 
and feminine energy is like a uh, like a flower a beautiful flower mm. but you know mask now is the stone equal to the flower like no they're two different things of consciousness stone is a stone it has its own characteristics it's a very strong physically strong it's a very tough uh heavy uh, when you think of a flower, a flower is fragile, flower is beautiful, flower is very delicate. Uh, but what's the unique selling point of flower is it's beautiful. Like, yeah, when you think of flowers, it's beautiful, it's feminine nature. And uh, a stone, a stone is also, yeah, in that sense, yeah, a stone is beautiful. But if, you, if you're conscious enough to see it, you can see the beauty of a stone as well. But uh, it's uh, the beauty is more uh, like this masculine, strong, and very like <laughs> yeah. Now you get it, right? So you obviously know that. But uh, but uh, yeah. So I like to objectify ma ma masculine and feminine energy in that way. It helps me. Uh, keep helps. It helps me keep my own understanding to a uh, proper space. So, anyways, uh, during this, uh, like I was saying, the barbaric period. Uh, men and women, uh, the masculine uh, men used to dominate uh, females because of their uh, high uh, mas masculine energy. They were able to do that, and uh, like how they used to go to wars. Like men of different communities used to go to war with each other, and you know the whole rape and pillage thing. Like they used to conquer uh, uh, another. Like so, two communities will go to a war, and whoever wins, they they overpower the other community. So basically what that means is the women of that community becomes uh, property, sexual properties of the men who conquer them. So like uh, historically, women have uh, been through a lot, really. I mean, women have been, to be honest, in the barbaric period, uh, the concept of uh, like rape was like uh, the concept of rape is, uh, is very, very recent. I mean, it's actually, pro if you uh, take the whole human evolution into perspective, uh, rape is a crime in modern day society because we are evolved, because we are intelligent enough to see that, yes, it's a crime. But in the prehistoric times, a rape was a very normal and everyday occurrence in the society. And uh, that's how females used to survive, you know, in the... Uh, they, it was tough for, for feminine energy to really survive in their in that hyper dominating masculine um, in their masculine uh, collective energy. So what happened is, as energies, these masculine and feminine energies, they evolved. The uh, the women became more and more submissive, and you know that is how evolution works. Evolution tries to find any way that can help a species survive. So the women, they survived, and that's how their psychology uh, formed, because the the great, 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 uh, like uh, our ancestors, the, the men were basically like dominating and abusing and raping and assaulting the women, and the women got so used to that, that uh, in the current time period, uh, what happens is women uh, become... Uh, sexually active if they can uh, find uh, men who can, you know, because it's all evolution, right? It's a uh, sex and attraction. It's, it's actually related. It's actually um, very much linked to that prehistoric evolutionary thing. So what happened is in today's society, in our modern society, a lot of women still get turned on by men who, uh, who are alpha who who they sense that that energy with that you know in the bedroom they can those men who can basically satisfy those women basically really uh give them you know what i'm trying to say like a good time a uh, good time is because of because their psychology is right now formed because of that old the, the whole evolution and that is how it came down and the younger females they their psyche just formed because because this is like how uh, how how you know they say generational trauma it's it just tra trauma uh, follows through generation like it comes down generations trauma and so uh, uh, this is uh, where I think happened and this is why in today's time 
you know, women, they are completely aware that they, I mean, they, they kind of, um, I, I, I really, uh, I think after so, so, so many years, uh, I understand like, well, like the point of view of women, like I'm able to see like what women, uh, see, like, uh, you know, when good, nice, nice guys, the, the betas, well, who are good people and genuinely good people when they try and approach these women and they always see like this guy is trying to get get with me like uh, get in my pants and have a relationship with me long term also so they these women they actually want these guys but it's because of the whole evolution and the past of how they evolved uh, their how their psychology evolved uh, they're just not turned on by the betas because that is how, not how society was so they, uh, the modern women, they, 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 they're not getting turned on by the betas, obviously, because that's how, because of the evolution. So they, they're getting turned on by the alphas, but at the same time, they know that the betas would be better be, uh, as a friend, like as a long-term companion, as far as companionship goes, uh, the beta males are like obviously in that spectrum the beta males are better so now spectrum that whole alpha beta like it's everything is relative like a beta is beta because there are people who are more alpha to them like there are betas below the beta so it's all a spectrum really and uh uh so yeah like so the women are now in this um uh difficult situation uh, where they're unable to decide their life partner because, you know, the alpha is going to satisfy them in bed, but the beta are unable to satisfy uh, them in bed. But yeah, like the companionship, friendship, long-term relationship, the whole love and romance, the betas, uh, the alphas obviously don't have that skill because the more brutally masculine you are, like you have to have some some portion of femininity femininity in in you to be able to um, you know just uh vibe in that whole i don't know how to say this like it's like for a relationship to work like yeah the whole masculine feminine but both have to have some kind of for a healthy for a relationship see a brutally masculine guy and a very soft weak fragile feminine they can hook up and it can work but it'll, it'll be in a very codependent and very abusive it can it can tend to be tend to be not always like it doesn't have to be like always abusive even a hyper masculine guy but um it it, it might become uh, uh that abusive codependent relationship where the female is just there because she she's just there i mean this guy can still uh you know like he gets her on but gets her turned on but uh, it's just all a very sexual and very pri primate kind of relationship like almost like an animalistic kind of relationship which i see a lot uh on speaking in the western societies in india that's not the case because the whole evolutionary thing i told you that yes that's a generalized that's that's that happened everywhere but i think that happened more in these Game of Thrones and Vikings kind of areas where it's like more of the European kind of area, the monarchies. Uh, uh, as far as India goes, India, I, I think uh, even from the very beginning, India was very um, overall compared to other countries, India have been very genuinely considerate of each other, regardless of men and women. They have been very balanced, the whole masculine feminine. Because uh, what I see, even in looking at historic time periods, Indian men, uh, even the hyper-masculine ones, have a very crisp femininity, coating a layer of femininity on them. But if you t consider Western societies, the masculine, brutal masculine guys are like absolutely like animals and beasts. Like they, they have zero femininity. Femininity. Uh, like... It's it's uh yeah it's very unevolved really kind of to carry that Neanderthal the gym going guy yeah we have that in India as well but you know I've seen 
like if you go to the gyms in India, if you go to the gyms in um, anywhere in, in America, California, or whatever, like uh, uh, New York, yeah, you will find a really like, like what I'm saying is like, yeah, like, uh, you heard me, yeah, like in India, yeah, like I uh, I told you that crisp layer coating of femininity is there, femininity is there, or even the most most hyper masculine and masculine guys. But which is which is a good like it, it, and even the women in India they have that crisp layer of masculinity. Even the more feminine women, they have some sort of leadership. They're not really that. Oh, I am a damsel in distress. There is there are no women in India who are damsel in distress. Like yeah, there are damsel damsels in distress in India, but the damsels in distress in uh, the white people. Kind, sorry, I'm <laughs> trying to be racist here, but yeah, anyways. The North Americans and all the Europeans, that that's just different. It's just the whole thing is different. Uh, yeah, the women in India also have the first coating of masculinity on them, which is good. Which I, which is why I think we, uh, that the whole relationship issue is uh, and the masculine feminine divide is not actually not so much in India as it is to Western countries. And I don't know about the whole thing. This this this, this aspect of life. Well, when I think of other countries like uh, like other Eastern countries like Japan and um, Korea, I don't know how that works over there. But as far as this goes, and yeah, the Eastern, excuse me, in the Muslim countries like Saudi Arabia, well, and Middle East, uh, it's, it's they're basically uh, on a developmental level, like when it comes to psychological development. Uh, they they're pretty far behind, so I I don't think uh, I, and frankly speaking, I don't have that much knowledge uh, about the whole Arabic world, and uh, but but the thing is, yeah, so yeah, because of that whole masculine. Now, what 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 I'm trying to say here is the whole relationship issue is first of all your your problem with your personal relationship is it's because. You're failing to understand the partner, and yeah, I mean, as a guy, uh, yeah, like women, women leave men because they are uh, because they're not that attractive in modern society. Even in India, they do. They they're very choosy and they're very uh, particular. Like this is my guy, and he this is he's more masculine, so why not, right? But you have to try to see the value in a person, like irrespective of their gender, of their masculine, feminine, whatever. Try to see because every person, like that whole onion um, metaphor, is it a metaphor? No, personification, right? The onion, uh, the if we use onion as a personification, uh, every every person has a layer to them. So you have to try and appreciate what I'm trying to say is basically the layers that they represent. Like every person, irrespective of their um, gender diaspora, you know. Everyone has layers. Everyone um, has incredible amounts of depth. I mean, oh my God, I have, uh, like with my deep one-on-one -on -one conversations with different people, um, there's just so much depth when it comes to people. Like, I, I now obviously, uh, like uh, men don't open up that much. So I've been able to explore the depths in females, like she, Females have so much depth to them. Like, um, I remember this one girl I was having a really deep conversation with. Like, she once told me, like, while we were really deep in that vibe, she told me, like, she can feel the pain of two crows. You know, when when she, she observes two crows, when they're fighting each other, she feels so bad for those two crows because she can, she can feel like an empath she can feel the 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 pain and the suffering in that moment when two crows are fighting each other. She feels really hurt. I I really felt that you know like that was really deep, right? Like if you're able to have that kind of consciousness where where you go really deep and you see two crows uh, fighting, and we observe that every day on a daily basis, things like that, right? Two pigeons, two crows, two dogs on the street fighting each other, two cats. We we did, we just don't care because. The society, the fast-paced society doesn't allow us to care so much for all those things. But it's just, 
I felt the depth of that situation, like that, um, what she said, basically. So anyways, yeah, like, uh, I think what I'm trying to say is that, like, uh, our relationships fail because um, we are not patient, really. And uh, to women, I, I just ha have to say that uh, women have to really, really participate in the game. Like, we have to, as a species, act more evolved and not act like we have to um really um you know be an active uh um perpetuator of uh, the human consciousness evolution like uh, if our consciousness doesn't evolve and stays in that barbaric time period where women were getting wet uh like because of that evolution women are getting wet because they see this man who can rough them up in the bed i mean uh if that is where we are in a society that's really sad right i mean because um modern evolved society should be one where masculine energy doesn't have to be animalistic um or how should I say this? Like masculine energy doesn't have to be so um violent, I guess. I mean masculine energy requires whenever there's a need for violence in society, masculine energy has to stand up and participate in that violence in order to protect the feminine energy, I guess. Uh, that's how things work. But in a conscious, in a more evolved society, there should be no need for extreme masculinity. There should be more, uh, like, because the masculine and feminine uh, balance is so delicate, masculine energy is so strong and vibrant, not so strong, basically, is that it can easily dominate and basically kill feminine energy. So masculine energy is required in less quantity. So as we we have to be careful as a society, if we let too much of masculinity uh, overpower our societies, what will happen is it will kill the feminine energy, which is right now kind of the situation in India. India lacks. India has feminine energy, but I don't think it's a uh, it's the. Um, I mean, it could be better. The feminine energy is is suppressed in India. It is trying to blossom into that beautiful flower, but it's somehow facing so many resistance and um, um, barriers, even though India has that feminine love and feminine uh, beauty to even its masculine forces. But I think we're getting there. Things are getting uh, better. And coming on to another angle that we can see this topic to is the whole feminist movement and the feminine movement. The, basically, the feminist uh, culture and the femi feminism. It's called feminism, right? Yeah, feminism. Yeah, and the feminist culture. What happens is uh, people uh, at our current, again, the Western paradigm, in India, we don't see that much of that either. In India, we see really appreciate feminism. feminism. But yeah, even right now in India, there's so much backlash when it comes to feminism and feminist culture. Uh, the problem is uh, that, and in Western, Western culture, we are currently seeing like a huge backlash against feminism. It's uh, The backlash is so bad that uh, so many channels that were promoting, uh, like on YouTube, so many channels who were promoting feminism, they're like dying. Really, honestly, feminism is really dying and really under attack. Like I don't, I don't want to say dying, but feminism and feminist culture is really under attack. And uh, the reason why it happened is because we are unable to see again past our gender identities. So what 
what frankly speaking I'm seeing here is that feminist culture to its core, it, it, it was about feminism. Uh, it was about the value and the uh, the the not the dominance, but it's it, it's like feminism as a movement as a culture is about the world like able to see and celebrate the beauty of feminine energy. I mean, I'm not exactly able to put it into words like how I see feminism. Um, but, uh, what happens is that, again, like, see, Western women who started feminism, like who started this whole culture and movement, the feminism, feminist movement, it was all going good. Women got the rights to vote, vote. in so many countries, women, for example, in Saudi Arabia, women were not allowed to drive, which recently they passed some law. Now the women can drive, which is like really great like that finally happened but the thing is like uh, like you see in western society especially why why feminism is hated is because the women uh, are participating in this hate hate culture in order to promote feminine feminist culture and feminine uh, culture what you can see the perfect example of this is Hollywood what Hollywood was doing for the last few years, they had been promoting this extreme, uh, this hate culture, this hate towards men. And like, you know, how men are stupid, men are evil, men are rapists, men are unevolved, men are horrible. This culture that was being perpetrated by the uh, Hollywood liberal uh, media and... Uh, this this is I think is the biggest reason for the backlash and the hate for feminine feminist culture and feminine femin, uh, feminism basically uh, is because uh, you know feminine feminism is about the promotion uh, of feminine culture so that as a society we are able to see the beauty of feminine culture. Because feminine energy, like I said, it's like a flower. It's a delicate flower. It's being suppressed by all the masculine forces. So in order, because as a society, the more conscious you become, you realize that just because you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter what your personal energy is. The entire spectrum of energy, both masculine and feminine, the entire energy field is important because ultimately, now this is, Again, like which I observed through my non dual non dualism awakening. So I had some like uh, brief exploration into spiritual awakenings, which uh, helped me see something beyond my human abilities, my human self. So ultimately, actually, the truth is like everything is one, the whole universe, and we are like we are right now in this human form, but ultimately. Uh, forms change. When we die, we change forms. Everything is one. The whole universe is one. So what happens is, when you, if you're a man, so men, let's say men are observing that feminists are hating uh, men. So men form the conclusion that, oh, so feminism is about male hatred. Uh, so this is bad for, for us men. So why should we promote it? Let's destroy feminism. Let's destroy the feminists. Uh, but... Uh, and even women participated in that because uh, because of the whole male hatred uh, thing that happened with feminism. But the problem here is like, yeah, that's that that was the problem. Like, because feminism uh, began by hating male and masculinity, but masculine and feminine again, that balance is important. Without, um, like. You can't expect the whole world to become feminine, and like it's it's complicated. But yeah, you you know what I'm trying to say here. Thank you. Try to understand what I'm trying to communicate. Is that see we have to like what I told you about the non-dualism and the the whole we are being one. Everyone is actually one. There's no separate individuals. That's an illusion we live under. 
And even society is awakening to that fact as well. Uh, uh, I had certain glimpses to that enlightening uh, fact, but you know, I, I've not like I didn't have a full awakening or whatever. But irrespective of that, I'm just bringing that because it helps. You, it will help me to communicate from where I am coming from uh, with this topic. Like, so basically, we have to think beyond our gender identities and we have to be think beyond our uh, you know animalistic instincts when it comes to relationships we just can't think of forming a long term relationship just based on the basic animalistic sexual attractions relationship in the long run is about what what is it about again coming back to the baseline question what is uh why why are your relationships ruined or uh why do your relationships keep failing it's because you don't approach your relationships with what with love you don't care about love you're all in this very materialistic world i'm sorry like my i don't have a green screen i mean this is just a zoom uh background effect but anyways um when it comes to relationships and frankly speaking any aspect of our lives we our approach to that particular problem is never in this materialistic world it used to be different in the early days in our parents generation for them relationship was like love first and sexual it, sexual nature was like a like a um like it was a aid that whole sex and sexual thing was an aid to love like love was above the whole sexual factor but in today's time sexual nature animalistic uh pre-evolutionary neanderthal unevolved that un, uh animalistic lizard kind of uh reptilian brain sexual mindset that is being focused and that is being perpetuated in uh, uh in this uh, today's consciousness that collective consciousness that we live in uh in our parents time it used to be love over like like i said sexual nature was just a like it, it, it was an aid to love it was uh, it was an aid to love but today it's different like people women are like like they're oh this guy is approaching me but he's he's not macho enough he's not masculine enough and that whole thing is is what it's all related to sex and it's all very sexual in nature um which is which is fine which is all good uh, sex is very healthy but but there's no love in it you're not approaching your approach has to be a one the one with love if you don't approach uh your relationships if you don't approach that partner with love patience how how do you cultivate patience with love it's it's all about love so if if you don't approach now it has to be love from both sides one sided love doesn't work it just dies out it's like a doesn't work it has to be participate uh, participants are in a relationship in our in a romantic sexual relationship is a two so both of them have to equally approach each other with love so that's how like love the collective love becomes one two people become one uh it's it has to be love if there is no love no relationship um survives without love but the problem is that women you have to i'm telling now i I'm, i'm targeting women i know but because i frankly speaking i i see a lot of problems here uh, like i i i see uh, like um like if women are more participatory in this thing frankly speaking i think the problem the solution we can reach closer to the solution uh, of the re- whole re- relationship problems because see there are 50% of the world is masculine and 50% is feminine so why the heck is anyone lonely nobody has to be lonely because there's endless supply of men and women and god knows how many genders there are but there are endless supply of them so there's no reason there's no practical real reason for anyone to be romantically or sexually lonely uh the problem why we are lonely is because 
no one is approaching the problem with love. If you uh, if you are just swiping and you're trying to you know up your gain, like regardless of men and women, like if you if you're just trying to up your gain, like oh I got some better one, like oh I have this uh, girlfriend boyfriend, oh I I just found someone who's better. Like what does that even mean? If your approach was with love. You wouldn't even think of someone being better. Why are you even comparing to one person with the other? Everyone is different. Everyone is unique. So try to find that unique connection and really value it. If you Because if you don't, then your relationship will fail. And it will keep failing. And what will happen is that both sides of the, uh, of the masculine, feminine, uh, the species, both sides of the energy spectrum will start hating each other, will be more polarized, which is happening, which, which has already happened, by the way, in Western societies. And thankful, thank, thanks to the Western culture and their influence in uh, countries like India, it's happening in India as well. Uh, so because of the whole masculine and feminine polarity, what is happening is uh, it's all polarized because you are not approaching with love what love does is it brings two polar opposites. The polarizing now, even if this in this current situation, if the collective consciousness of our planet, if more basically, uh, what I'm trying to say, the trend reverses, which it will, because the will, like I said, the will always turn turns. So right now it's very polarized. But when the will wheel of life will turn again, uh, more and more people will basically come close to each other. Uh, the let me rephrase and uh, correctly communicate here. More and more people of both the gender spectrum and the like, the masculine feminine energy spectrum, more more accurately speaking here, the spectrum, the uh, people from different uh, both the spectrums will come closer to each other because they will start approaching the other with love. They will start to try. Uh, they will start to see life through the other energy spectrum's point of view. You get what I'm trying to say. So basically what will happen is uh, this will cause the unification and this this is what love is all about, unification, oneness, um, different fragments divided into societies coming together, integrating with each other and becoming a one single individual, a whole. That is on a u universal level also that's what love is all about. The whole whole spectrum, the entire universe coming and becoming one. That's what that's a different topic. That's what God and uh, infinite consciousness is all about. But yeah, anyways, it applies to everything. So yeah, our approach to this problem of relationships should be with love. And please, please, women, I'm trying to say here, I know, I know a lot of men have done horrible things. It is true. Men have been really horrible. Our past records have been really horrible. Our forefathers have been really rapey and really horrible people i know i know all that evolutionary baggage is there but because we are evolved right as a species we are more evolved now uh we are i don't know if we have reached the pinnacle of evolution because maybe we have because we are in an era living in an era of artificial intelligence so maybe we in some sense we have kind of reached the pinnacle of our evolution in some sense maybe there's more to go i don't know but the thing is um as far as this problem is considered with relationships uh you just have to approach anybody of any gender irrespective of any gender people have to see the love in other people and people have to you now again yeah like i was saying uh, talking to the women um yeah i know though men have been horrible but you know you have to be better than the men you have to you have to be able to see like you have to you have, just be be the bigger person and forgive the past evolutionary whatever and not even forgive like be be intelligent enough to be able to see through that that problem that bull crap like have enough intelligence to be able to see the, through that crap that you are currently in it's because stop seeing yourself as an individual 
because if you look see uh, like the problem with again another problem which is uh, affecting this uh, situation is because we are very they have become very individualistic uh but we have to remember the fact that we uh, as our species is actually an evolution of from the monkeys like we are not oftentimes we we especially men they think of themselves when when we think of uh, powerful alpha males right we compare ourselves with lions and tigers right when it comes to that powerful masculine energy and even feminine like when a woman is trying to uh become like this strong independent woman like a feminist type of woman she looks at this this images right where where a woman is looking in the mirror and she's seeing a lioness and a tiger a female lady tiger uh but we have to remember that we are actually evolutionary descent of the monkeys the apes uh so what what makes apes and monkeys different from tigers and lions is basically the fact that lions and tigers are very individualistic creatures but monkeys are social creatures they're they're very community driven creatures so it's just um, because of evolutionary um like fact we kind of have to understand that we have to look beyond our individual selves because we are a collective we we cannot really become tigers and uh lions because they they are very different from us they are very like your cat you you know how individualistic your cat is but no matter how how much you love your cat there's no way you you don't have the enough strength some do some people who reach the pinnacle of human consciousness evolution they touch that highest level of consciousness what a cat can do but uh or a tiger can do but not a uh, really people in general most people because of that whole coming down and descending from the ape and the monkey spectrum of species it's just that uh we 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 are not able we won't be able to do that i mean so um for a lack of better explanation um i mean i could have explained this better but yeah this is the farthest i could get uh as far as my uh, communication limit goes uh my ability to communicate because see that the problem is that i'm trying to communicate something here but it's like uh everything that i'm trying to say has a limit to my abilities and my skills of communication so uh as time goes on i will probably get uh, i will i'll get better with it uh, i can promise you that uh but Uh, the thing is as far as today's topic is considered we have to approach my basic uh, uh message or whatever like my basic understanding on this topic is basically that we are lacking our approach to love and we we are not looking at uh, the collective uh, and the whole problem we are not seeing it with the eyes of love and if we did that i think and if we do that i'm sure which will we will because collectively our consciousness will evolve as it always has been this is how it happens um so we will uh, finally get closer to the solution of our relationship problems i'd say so yeah that's pretty much it like so why your relationships uh, keep failing like just become more conscious you'll be able to see uh whatever i'm talking about here i'm not sure something is clicking i guess um i'm sure of that and uh mm, things uh just remember one thing like no matter what happens like it's just this evolutionary uh, no, sorry not evolution this universal force that is acting uh through us this god like universal force of consciousness that's acting through us all human beings just if you're finding yourself in a rough spot in a bad situation i just want to tell you this like if maybe you're in a very difficult situation going through rough times i just want to tell you one thing like just if you're not able to understand at that particular moment because you're you're going to a, through a storm so when you whenever your consciousness is going through a storm just, just remember one thing that you can always cross this infinite consciousness because you have no idea this god like consciousness 
it is actively always working its way towards global evolution and global awakening and you're in good you're in good hands basically what i'm trying to say i mean don't forget that ever like um see me as a person in this video right now when i'm recording because i'm able to say and speak out these things with immense confidence the reason being is because right now in this current moment i am vibrating and connecting not fully but to some extent i'm able to communicate that connect with that infinite consciousness but as soon as this recording is over i will and when i'm like doing mundane everyday regular stuff you know like throwing out the garbage and cooking and going to the, going to the grocery store like whenever i will do that i will kind of disconnect with that infinite consciousness and you know the, the everyday problems that you face in your life it's all me i also face i also go through all that situation but it's like because um we are always tuned in to the to the mundane aspect of human life because as human beings most of us just go through life right so we uh kind of get disconnected from the infinite consciousness uh that we forget uh, that uh, something is there which is uh which is just which is there it's this perpetrating uh the whole uh construct the whole um <laughs> it's hard for me to explain it's 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 something larger than you which is you basically a larger you which is all of us that one thing that one infinite consciousness is basically what i'm trying to say is that it knows what it's doing so just whenever you're in a bad spot just trust it i mean if you are not able to do anything at that moment maybe you're see most people are not intelligent enough to understand a lot of things there are a lot of really uh uh big things for lack of better words there are a lot of uh, huge things in life uh that we are unable to understand uh, while going through our everyday mundanity of life but it's just if you're not able to fathom those things i'm just trying to say this that like trust me it's everything is all right you're in the good hands of the infinite consciousness and it is going to ultimately everything will make sense it's just you have to be patient and don't don't be afraid i mean there's really nothing to be afraid if even if the worst of worst situation comes uh like for example i'm going to give you a snippet uh i don't know if it <laughs> will it be up or will it be appropriate to even drop it here but it's like you know how you know that death like we die right when when we die we die there's no that's not even a real thing i mean you can look up on the internet but again like that's a i mean you need to work on your consciousness to understand all those things but even something that most people are afraid of like uh, the physical death that's not even a real thing um so when you understand all those things you realize that there's actually nothing to be afraid of so it's just we are playing this game of life and uh it's it's a good game i mean you if you if you play actively play it it's good just just be active enough and participate in the game which is what i'm telling to you women also like in this in this episode i'm constantly targeting you women out like you have to participate in this game of relationship which is like a sub game like uh, life has a lot of sub games like relationship is one game being a being a mom or dad is another game being the parents as a game your career is another game um uh, your physical uh, exercise workout you're looking after your new uh, physical health that's another game uh talking um spirituality is a game um your um like whatever caring about the environment everything um politics that's that's a big game played by so many people um education career what else your passions hobbies your sports your music your your art forms your paintings your music your movies and everything e- everything is all it's all a big game and we are all in it and we are all playing it so 
but but we we gotta make this game better for everyone. I mean, so that I mean, when the game improves, your individual life will improve. So always have a holistic approach to anything. Don't be limited by your own self. Like don't be selfish. Like why that person left me? Why she left me? Why he left me? Or why my relationships don't work out? Um, approach next time when you're in a relationship. Uh, be more loving. Like yeah, it, like I said, the whole relationship game won't work if, like the one-on-one romantic relationship won't work if the other person is also not approaching it with love. But all you can do from your own point of view is that you can maximize your love. Uh, if it doesn't work, well, I mean it's just part of life. I mean as a human life, uh, you you have to go through like. You cannot really avoid suffering. I'm sorry to say this, but I wish it was different. But yeah, it's just suffering is a part of the game. I mean, yep, you'll realize it. The more mature you get, you'll realize that um, you you will suffer, but then it will it will make you um, stronger. It will make you like more. Suffering will help you understand. And gain gain new perspective on things. So the more you suffer, uh, like you you might think that's weird to say, but yeah, it's actually better. The more you suffer, more you learn. Like don't participate now in in deliberate suffering. I mean, life. Don't worry about suffering. Life will give you enough suffering. Don't worry about that. About that. Now don't be stupid enough to um, increase your suffering. I guess. Uh, to on your own, like add to your own suffering, because yeah, hey, I heard this guy on the internet. You said the suffering is really good for you, so and that's why I'm like adding to my suffering, like deliberately. Don't worry, life will give you enough suffering. You don't have to worry about that. But it's like it's it's part of the game. You just don't see it because as a human, we are unable to see it. But it it all makes sense. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, yeah, like, so yeah. That's what I had to say, basically. I don't, I think I covered, uh, at least right now in my conscious space, whatever I can um, really materialize in this conversation, in this uh, communication. Uh, I I think I, I have communicated to my full extent, at least right now. Obviously, like, the consciousness is a space, uh, infinite space, so more things will come up and I'll make more videos about more more topics that will be relevant to our human uh, problems and human understanding as time goes by. And uh, so, yeah, that was my entire take on the topic. I, I really hope that you, uh, you got something valuable because I took a lot of your time. And I, I really appreciate you if you watched till the end. And I'm just, just new in this, uh, like I, I haven't, made regular videos before but i plan to do so and um, so if you want more updates from me in the future uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, like this video so that it gets promoted on the youtube community and network you know so the algorithm pushes my video and it helps to spread uh, spread more to because you know frankly i i i mean i don't want to sound narcissistic but yeah i feel like this is an important communication right i mean i just feel that so i i really believe that this is uh, important because i i i have uh, watched uh, so many videos on youtube about the relationships topics and all uh they don't cover so much to this uh, kind of depth uh there's one channel on youtube which is uh, actualized.org uh there's uh, that youtuber leo gura he goes really deep into to uh, particular topics and frankly speaking uh, he has been a big inspiration for me to really uh, make uh, long form uh, videos where I go really deep into a particular topic. So please help me spread these videos and uh, subscribe to my channel, like I said. And thank you if you did it. Thank you for watching this video. And I'll be making more such videos in the future about uh, issues that we are facing, uh, that we are facing as a species in general. Uh, so yeah, subscribe and you're going to more, you're going to get more stuff like these about deep stuff, like anything that I will discuss, I'll go deep. So if you're into that kind of thing, 
it'll be valuable for you if you subscribe to my channel and yeah thanks for watching my video and take care on yeah and just to, like uh, i want this to be a conversation like so whatever like don't don't feel left out i i always feel like the, on this youtube i feel there's so so much limitation uh because as a when i'm like i'm the video creator so like I feel like whenever I'm watching someone's video, like, because it's, uh, most people do it as a career, which is great. Even I plan to do it as a career of my own. Uh, if not now, in the long-term future, I think of this as a good career. But uh, the thing is, like, I, I would like this to be a more participatory. Like, if you have any questions, for example, you have some issues, like, drop it in the comments, and I will actively participate in the comments to so that this this behaves more like a like a subreddit than a youtube channel so so that this becomes a community we can create a good community here where we are able to you know vibe with each other if we uh, get like so many good minds in a in a particular space you can only imagine right the limits of that particular um the possibilities of that discussion and the things that we can come up with, and it will ultimately solve so many problems because we will delve deeper and deeper into particular issues. And that will just help us in understanding uh, the problems because we have so many problems as a human species. We are, we are really lagging and uh, we are nowhere close to perfection as a species. There's, there's so much suffering and uh, so much inequality in the world like with the whole masculine feminine polarity there's so much inequality but there's inequality in every spectrum really like if you think about the rich versus poor like you know how they say like the top one percent of the world population the richest one percent they have the wealth of the excuse me the 90 uh, wealth of the 90 uh, percent of the world's wealth something like that there's so much inequality when it comes to any spectrum in life and uh, I just like, uh, like, I think it, it'll be better as a society, right? That we uh, become a more uh, equal and more like selfless society because that's our true nature, to be honest. Everything is like one. So selfless is definitely the way to go, um, but it, it's, it will not happen until the people in power the top one percent powerful people realize that that is what uh, the what life is all about and i think a lot of powerful people do realize that uh honestly that selfless is the way to go they uh, they do realize i believe uh but a lot don't like uh, the dictators of the world they don't uh a lot of rich people rich entrepreneurs they do uh and i think they're trying to eliminate that uh but we have a long way to go so yeah, please participate in the comments, post whatever you want. Doesn't matter. Don't don't be afraid of like don't you have to be don't think about what you're gonna post. Anything that you honestly feel. If you feel this video, whatever feelings you have about this video, just post it. Be honest, and uh, so that we can together improve and I can push better content. I can improve on my content. All right. Thank you for watching. Take care. Have a good one.